Hey everyone, so I'm here in my parents' backyard. I'm in town for some family reasons and decided, you know what, let me try out an idea that me and Danielle have had for when we go visiting various places and that is to use this, which is a parachute, um, parachute hammock made with parachute nylon from good old Harbor Freight. The idea is a tent takes us forever to set up and tear down. It's at least, I'm gonna say, about an hour to set up and about an hour to tear down. And obviously I know building the tent ne not necessarily takes that long, but it's all the other stuff, the air mattresses, getting it in and out of the car, figuring out how to put it together, putting tarps down, you get the idea. It's a lot of work, especially if you have to move camp quickly or you decide to go somewhere else. It's not a one size fits all solution, but I figured it's worth a try. So while I'm down here, I've got a couple of trees out here. I've got my dad's carport in the way, but that shouldn't be too big of an issue. I figured, you know what? Let me, actually I might do this in a different spot. Let me at least give this crazy idea a try and let's see how it goes. Cause the last thing I wanna do is attempt to do this in the middle of nowhere and well, figure out it doesn't work. So uh, let me change spots and get started. All right, so I've changed locales. You might recognize that as the tiny house. I'm actually inside what used to be a rabbit enclosure of all things out here in the backyard. So the idea is there's a tree somewhere over there. Can't really get on camera super easily. And there's our old pull-up bar swing set thing right there. And the idea is it's just for the temporary setup. I'm going to set it up between the two of those and that should be more than good enough because I wanted something that's unobstructed because the plan is we're going to have a secondary um, kind of like a blanket tarp thing over the top so that would theoretically prevent things from falling on you. So let me um, get the uh, stuff out. Okay, clearly, as you can see, I am underneath the covering tarp. Now, let me take you outside so it makes a little more sense. So the idea here is pretty simple. This up here would help protect you down below underneath here in the event of crappy weather. So what I ended up doing was just taking a piece of this is um, climbing webbing and just looped it through the little end right there and the you could say the sheet or the tarp came with these little plastic stakes which are actually pretty handy so i've got that there i've got some more climbing webbing and i'm just using a climbing carabiner obviously that's way overkill but just using what i had at my disposal and i did the same down at the other end initially this did not look long enough but once i got it up there i'm going to say it's probably long enough um i do wish it was maybe a little bit longer but you know what it was the cheapest that i could find and i didn't want to get something that was so overkill big it was actually going to be a bigger problem and now the nice thing is because of the tension it holds itself up pretty well obviously you know you might get a little bit of something building up in there but i don't think we're going to necessarily be camping in a rainstorm and then over on that side just have it clipped off to the fence Naturally, in real life, that would be on the ground. But let me actually hop inside this thing and give you a rundown of what it feels like from the inside. And in the process, not, you know, fall on my butt and make a viral video of Calvin falling out of the uh, hammock in his parents' backyard. But 
I do have to say this is a it's a decent setup, especially if I move myself farther down in the hammock. Now you can see that I'm covered. If I had my head up there, I'd probably be a little bit less covered. So I do have to say though that this setup would work pretty well. I will say I might look into a bigger version of the um, cover that we have on top. I'll see what I can find size-wise if it's a gigantic difference. I'm not going to. Only because the last thing I would hate to have happen is be out somewhere and then all of a sudden, you know, something falls on us and it becomes super miserable. But at the same time, for what it is, I think it offers more than enough protection. The idea is if leaves fall down or do in the morning or something like that. And then the other hope is by having a cover up there, obviously I would probably be in a sleeping bag or similar, but hopefully it would help form a little bit of a heat trap and or if you had any natural bug repellents, hopefully it would create a little bit more of a sheltered area. And in the worst case, if the weather got really crappy, you could always just pull the sides down more and probably have a pretty good setup. But I got to admit, for taking less than probably 15 minutes to set up in I would say less than ideal conditions, this is pretty nice. Now, one thing I am gonna look into doing is making, um, or if they're cheap enough, I hate saying it, buying it, some paracord tensioners to use for the um, top cover and the sides. Obviously, if we were gonna be bringing these somewhere, the hammocks, um, the straps included are pretty long, but I would probably pack along a couple of my climbing um, webbing pieces and the carabiners. It doesn't hurt, especially if we needed to do a more complex setup with these. Um, but yeah, I gotta say, this is uh, pretty, pretty darn comfortable for what it is. I don't think I've been to this part of your yard. Well, welcome to this part of the yard. Welcome to this land. <laughs> and we shall call it this land. Oh. So, okay. feel free to hop inside. Okay, I, I, see, I see I see. what you're going for here. Yeah. Now, I guess the one question I have is that, I mean, this is great as far as, like, you know, rain protection, albeit as long as it's not, like, rain and wind at the same time. But what about bugs? Well, hop inside and I'll explain my bug ideas. Okay. Oh, this is high. Yeah, I made it high, but it, it sinks down. Okay. Get yourself comfy in there. <laughs> yes, I definitely feel Good like night. a <laughs> Oh, okay. So then you're thinking of like, you know, clipping this shut? Either clipping that shut, or I'm thinking if you had a sleeping bag in there, it'd probably bulk it up some. Oh yeah, I forgot to bring mine, sorry. That's all good. <laughs> you still get the idea though. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I think this could work. Here, so the idea for bugs was I had a couple of ideas. And also the reason why I have this kind of high is just for the sake of getting in and out. You could always easily drop this lower if you wanted to. Right. I just figured I'd try it up high. The idea that I had for bugs was a couple of ideas. One of them was I have some mosquito coils. Another one was obviously there's um, like those little tab things that you can get for the little burner that goes on top of a can of fuel. Mm hmm okay because the idea was or the third idea was there are pockets inside this thing so if you had something treated with like DEET or something like that you could always put that into the pockets and then it's not in direct contact with you but because this kind of forms a wind barrier it would prob or similar thing it would probably kind of help trap whatever's there okay yeah, and I in the worst case, you could always get a mosquito net if you wanted to, but my main concern was more of rain and sticks and junk falling on you. Well, yeah, and that's that's the thing. But I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to like you know kind of clip this in at night, yeah, that that may suffice. Now, how? Okay, so 
yeah, this thing looks like, you know, it'll curtail the rain and whatnot, but what about the hammock itself? What do you mean by that? Like, how water resistant is this thing? I'd assume it's probably similar. I have thought about getting a bigger version of this cover thing if we were good to go somewhere that was going to be known to be pouring rain. Because this is a little shorter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. But so it's still usable. Still... We could still put it on the ground and use it as kind of like a floor mat or something like that. Well. So it's not it's not 100% useless, that's for shizzle. Well, I guess another thing we could see is we could try getting this wet and see how long it takes to dry off. Yeah. I mean, it, it got damp earlier and it seemed to work fine. Well damp is one thing. Yeah, I know. Rain's another thing. <laughs> like, wait. Didn't, wait, yeah. Didn't it rain when we were in Lassen? It did, didn't it? Because there was that thunderstorm, remember? That was when we were up on the mountain. I, I know, but then we got back and it looked like that it had also rained at the campsite. So true, the tent, true. So the tent was a little wet. Well, this is pretty much the same material that a tent rain shield is made from, to my understanding. Yeah, so it's like, I mean, yeah, it wasn't really a big deal that the tent was wet because it's not like we were touching it, but with something like this, where it's like it's going to be in contact with your body, you well, know. Well, worst case scenario, we could always keep the cover up and just fold this thing up and put it inside of like a bag and hang it underneath. You know, that's true. Because this thing literally takes like a minute to set up and tear down. That's the beauty of it. This whole thing took me less than 10 minutes, and that includes me running in the house to grab, whoops, my nylon webbing and carabiners for the top which is what i love about it is it's literally a quick setup and tear down yeah that's nice so i say let's just for curiosity's sake let's get this wet okay. and see what happens the hammock yeah okay like you know simulate like you know we Rain. have a night where it rains okay what's gonna happen that sounds like a good idea and while we're at it, we should pour some water over the top thing to see what it does. Okay. But, all right, let's do that. So, we found some gallon milk jugs, and um, let me just test the water. Why don't you go underneath, and I'm going to test the water repellency of this. Okay. So, I'm going to pour a little bit on at the top. How's it looking in there? Uh, it's not wet. It definitely, like, you know, sinks down. Yeah. But... If we... You know what? Let's leave that sitting and see what it does. Yeah. Here, I'll give you the camera so you can film me dumping water on it. Let's take it a piece. <laughs> okay, right. so it goes off that way. Okay, you stay in there. I'm just going to dump more water on it. Okay. This is the torrential downpour that will never happen. <laughs> Well, the hammock still looks okay. I don't feel any moisture underneath. Mm hmm That's impressive. Okay. okay. I'm gonna say that's a pass. <laughs> For okay. the rain cover anyway. Yeah, you wanted to see how the hammock handles getting damp and it's not exactly warm conditions out here. It's pretty humid. And don't worry, this is uh, gonna be kind of your quote hammock anyways, because I flew it down with me and mm -hmm. I got the other two up north. Okay, so yeah, I guess I'll just, I'll do it on the outside first. Sounds like a plan. Well, I'll get my shoes wet. Sorry. That's pretty water repellent. That's impressive. Yeah, it doesn't feel wet at all on the inside. Dang. Let me see if it says anything about it, if it's water repellent or probably doesn't, but... Hey, it's 500 pound capacity. <laughs> Yay. Not that any of us, I think all three of us would be under 500 pounds. That's a good question, actually. Okay. Now, here's... The six here's, million dollar question, water on the inside? Yeah, what happens, like... Yeah, just pour it in there and let it sit for a bit. Create, like, the worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. That's oh, got water in it. See what it looks like underneath. I'm not feeling anything. So yeah, that would be 
Okay, well, here. I mean, it's gonna, slowly soaking in. Well, well, let me let me do this. Let me pour more water in it, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump it out. Okay. And we'll see what happens. This is called hardcore product testing with Calvin and Danielle. <laughs> let's let it sit for a minute to let it see if it'll soak in. Okay. Because let's simulate, you know, we're gone for a bit. Torrential downpour. Yeah. At which point, I think if, it is, if all of this failed, I think we'd be running to the car. It's starting to drip. Okay. Well, that's not terrible. No. As long as it's not soaking in. Actually, the fact that it's draining isn't a bad thing. No, when it's on the inside, that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, the main, the main thing is if it soaks into the fabric or not. All right, so it looks like it's soaked in a little bit, but. So yeah, let's dump this out. Let that sit for a second. Good thing you're wearing flip flops. <laughs> I came prepared. Yeah, you're a little more prepared than uh It wasn't intentional. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much your default mode yeah, anymore. Pretty much. Blue tiger shirt, shorts, and flip flops. How <laughs> to spot a Danielle. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so it is a little damp. It's fairly wet. Like, this is if you came back to this, you would not want to sit in it. No. Unless you had a towel. No. But I would assume it would probably dry pretty quick. Well, I guess what we could do is we could just leave it and then come back later and see if it's still soaked. Bingo. But yeah, the rain cover seems to work just fine. I don't expect it to be 100% perfect, but as long as it keeps it off of you. Yeah. And the other thing is, in most places we would have trees above us, so that would offer some degree of rain protection in and of itself, because it wouldn't be a gallon bucket of water just being slopped on there. Okay, that's all. <laughs> cool, let's, uh, let's get some food and come back to this later. Sounds good. What do we want to get for food? <laughs> That's always the answer. <laughs> we'll be back later once we have food and this has sat out in probably like 70, 60, 70 degree weather for a couple of hours. And the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, and then after that is when we did the Nevada trip. When we did like the two day Nevada trip after you got sick. And that was really awesome too. That was fun. Okay, so... I mean, that feels effectively dry. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Let's see what the inside is like. That's the $6 million question. What do you know? I mean, it's it's a little cool, but it's dry. I mean, it's pretty, it's already pretty damp out here. And that was, we left that like two hours ago. Two-ish hours ago. Yeah, and it's not, it's not like it's 90 degrees and 10% humidity either. No. I'm really impressed. I think this could work. I do too. Well, my maybe my maybe my stupid idea actually is pretty smart after all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I totally just said that. Yes. Oh, there's some more water. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's going to be like you know the the cover title for this is like you posing in front of this like hammock thing with your t-shirt on saying my stupid ideas are smart. <laughs> Actually that one's up north and I was stupid and I didn't realize that Jimmy's dryer gets really hot and it might have slightly melted the stuff on it. Oh well there's a case where your stupid ideas weren't smart. <laughs> yeah they're not always they're not always Nobel Prize winning ideas I'm sorry. <laughs> I do feel bad that happened though. <laughs> you another one. <laughs> I'll just have to have a run t-shirts made. <laughs> okay, all, all, all jokes aside, I'm... Here, let me, let me... Let's give it the wet butt test. Hopefully it's not gonna wet butt. <laughs> yeah, this is dry. That's impressive, because that thing was wet. Well, I think we're ready for the ultimate test. Actually taking this thing out into the wild and using it at a later date? Yep. I like this idea. Okay, let's tear this thing down. I got a flight to catch tomorrow.